What's going on, people? And welcome to Nerds of the Round Table, where we talk about Marvel, Marvel, and more Marvel. Today, we're going to be doing our Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania review. Let's go into this mid credit scene with the Council of Kangs, bruh. Yo, drop Let's the, go through drop them, the flowers on my f face in this, in, go, on, like, on the screen go, for this. Like, make it rain roses go, on me, bro. Son. Like, like yeah. go, uh, bro, they fucking... Oh, that, they freaking came on. Going back to 2006. Right, 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 right. Make it rain oh. and lay it out. Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Variants shown in order of appearance. Let's get it. Mr. Robotut has been shown. Yeah. Oh, my God. The who, who, shit I have who, who, said for so long, I have been way. preaching it over and over. If you have heard you it before, like, you you're probably annoyed with me by now, and it's okay. You don't got to hear it no more, but now you got to see it. It's even better. <laughs> we are Ramatut. Ramatut. And we got, we got motherfucking debates on this second one. We all know who it is. Yeah. Violet Centurion, Scarlet Centurion, Future Kang. Who knows who this is, but go with one of them. I uh, would tell further notice. And then we got Blue Face Old Man, Longest Lived, Variant of Kang, Immortal. Said the Blue Face that left Krishan. Wild. Wild. <laughs> and then we got a few in the crowd. We got like a Doctor Doom Kang, and we got a Scarlet Centurion Kang looking one out there in the crowd but bro this scene bro these kangs just it was it was the most satisfying was, scene in marvel for me since yeah. like endgame yeah yeah <laughs> it's like damn that's the armor straight right? up that's the army we're gonna go against like. that's the army that we are about to see. that's the keg dynasty like that like what we just saw is our next three years Two and, yeah, two and a half. That with Ultron, and now they're like, we're giving you that, like. And like that's necessarily, crazy. he's not necessarily gone either because we still got White Vision. Yep. Whenever the fuck he decides to come back. Which is crazy, like they were just like, bro, like they're gonna do the whole Wanda Vision thing, do that to Wanda, and then like, the multi, well, like, the multiverse of bad. They, they should, she shouldn't have. Okay, I don't think she's dead, but. So, okay, so this is where some things in my head become very complicated, though, now that we have physically seen Amortis and the TVA. We don't have the timekeepers yet. They are, at this point, a figment of our imagination. Amortis and the timekeepers... Like he worked for them, like he he was their Kang basically. He was like that's what Amoris's job was. Right. So part of me thinks that the TVA that we see at the end of Loki is the real Timekeeper's TVA, and that's Amoris we're seeing. But he doesn't have the suit. He's got Kang's suit, which is weird. Which is why. When we get to this next part about Mr. Victor Timely, I'll explain why I think it could be him. Did you guys have anything else on the uh, main credit scene? All I gotta say is, for those who are confused about what they meant by they, quote unquote, are touching it, they're talking about the Avengers touching the multiverse and other characters such as Deadpool who we haven't seen yet touching the multiverse and how they're getting too close to messing up their plans for the multiverse in that's why we are going to be fighting them in the future because they're afraid the Avengers are going to screw up their plans and they got total control right now yep, I can see that. that is all I can totally see that wild stuff but that's why they assembled they had to call everybody so that everybody was aware so that everybody can prevent so that everybody can move to their stations and start 
encountering these heroes because these heroes are jacking up the players and the multiverse war is about to ensue, bro. Is yeah. it on a loop, though? I wonder if they got to do something with Captain America in this scene because let's be real, he's one of the only other people who traveled to travel the quantum realm as well as he did. Like, he was the one who went and sent back the all the stones they, they grabbed. Like, so I wonder right. if there's a point where he's gonna come back to help them. Like, okay, yeah, I knew this king shit was gonna happen. There's a threat. Girl, I'm just catching up though. But yeah, right, it's, I mean, just, it's just it's just crazy. As well. It's crazy. Let's talk about this post credit scene. It, 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 it explains who Victor Timely is real quick. So we're introduced to Victor Timely, a variant of Kang, who in the comics goes back to the year of 1901 and becomes the mayor of in a town that he establishes called Timely, Wisconsin. And then he funds the technology that will benefit him in the future to get him to hit the point of becoming Kang is basically what happens there. Um, this variant also is a robotics engineer who created countless robots that have fought the Avengers throughout some of these uh, throughout some of the some of the comics. Victor Timely and his astounding temporal marvel is what you see when you first see this man come on screen. Then you see Owen Wilson, Mobius M. Mobius, and Loki. And this is then a setup for Loki Season 2. Why, might you ask, are Loki and Mobius M. Mobius specifically here to see Victor Timely? The question. question will be answered in Loki. We got any theories on that, though? So, referring back to previous statement, I think that the version of Kang that we see gets shrunken into the multiversal engine at the end of the movie is shrunken so far or is sent so far back in time it is prior to any TVA being created, hence Victor Timely. The reason we see Victor Timely with no scars is because it's before that version of him gets those scars. So I'm predicting that sometime in Loki season two, we're gonna see him get those scars on his face that we see Kang get. Revelation. Ready here first. I think Loki season two is going to rely heavily on uh, Loki, Mobius, and then building a relationship with the Timely slash AKA Kang. Because they think that he's going to be on, on their side. He's going to be the good one to help set everything straight. And we're going to see him play them like a fiddle. Just like he was trying to do to Janet the whole time. And it's going to come out at the end that, oh, you guys have really just been helping me. Thank you. Gone. Mic drop. Mic drop. MF out. That'd be wild, bro. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in Loki. I can't wait to see which version of Kang is in charge of the TVA at the moment. Thanks. And it's going to be crazy, bro. It's going to be crazy. Thank y'all for watching. You have been listening to the Nerds of the Round Table. Follow us at Marvel, Marvel, More Marvel on the social medias, Instagram and TikTok, which we will put up real quick for you here. You know, keep 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 that subscribe button and that bell on so you know when we upload these videos, they're gonna be coming Ding. out Ding. real soon. Coming out in waves, coming out in in, in, in droves. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Peace, love, and chicken grease. Boosters, boosters.